Stinger Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Bobby Gregory. He's one of the best fighters I've ever seen. He's a middleweight with a lot of style and two good hands. The crowds love him. So do I. I should. I found him and brought him along. That's me there, Mike Dundee. And that's Jack Bellotti. There's good and bad in everything, and it's guys like Bellotti that hurt a great sport like the fight game. Now, we're all a part of this story, Bellotti and myself, and the young blonde kid named Gregory, who wanted more than anything else in the world to be a champion. This is a story about a fighter, and how he got to be a fighter. The first time I saw Bobby Gregory was one afternoon at Sullivan's gym. He looked pretty funny. He didn't even have a pair of boxing trunks, and he was slugging it out with a sharp middleweight named Guilardo. Guilardo didn't like one bit. Say, what do you think you're doing? Fight a main event? I paid my four bits. Well, I hope it was worth it. I came up here to fight. So did I. But I don't plan on killing nobody. If you want to work out, okay. But if you're mad at some guy, find a guy. Don't take it on me. I want to fight. So do I, but not that way. If you're scared. Look, jerk. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on here? Ah, this jerk pays his poor best to work out. And I do him a favor. He don't want to work out. He wants to kill somebody. You tough, kid? Let's find out. Let's find out. You're kidding. The kid's a rube. He throws punches like he's washing windows. Is that right? You're a window washer, kid? Let's find out. He wants to find out. OK, but you better get a stretcher. What's your name? Gregory. Bob Gregory. How much do you weigh? 165, more or less. It's going to have to be less. I need a middleweight. Well, I hope you find one. Oh, you're not too bad. You mean you think I could be a fighter? Let's find out. I'm here at the gym every afternoon. Hey, mister. Who is he? Are you kidding? That's Mike Dundee, the best fight manager in the business. And you're lucky he even talks to you. Next day, I was at the gym like I told Gregory I would be. I thought a lot about the kid. He was raw, but he had something. Something you watch for. Mr. Dundee. The name is Mike. I want to fight. I do it. Tell me something. Think you can take him? Do you think so? I don't know. I hope so. Who is he? That's Fred Stevens. A middleweight champ? Yeah, that's right. Well, I had a middleweight. Now I had to find out if I was right about him. I sent him out to the training farm where he went to work with Julio and Groggy. He started in kindergarten, learning about footwork and how to move and feint and shift his weight around, get the feel of the ring. Hey, the time! Uh, uh, time! Time! A fighter's legs can be more important than his fists, so by the time he graduated to the first grade, he was running five miles a day, up and down every road in the country. When he wasn't doing road work, there were other things to do. He was learning a trade, a tough trade, one where experience pays big dividends and mistakes can put you out of business. As the weeks went by, he learned more and more. And the more he learned, the sharper he got. 
Good. Fine. Now give me a left hook to the body. Step, step right in. Now don't turn the wrist. Turn the wrist a little more. Fine. A little harder. Good. Right there. See? That's it. Now come on, kid. Come on. Come on. Now keep your left hand up. Okay. Straight left. Come on. Left. Straight left. Okay. Now right to the body. Now it's the same hook. Right. Again. Keep your chin down. Keep your chin down. Box? Eh, if you're a good boy. Okay, who's going to be first? Who do you think? <laughs> Tasted the McCoy, but he didn't back down. And by the time he was ready to graduate, he was showing Julio a few things. <laughs> Finally, Julio called me and told me it was time to come up to the farm. Hey! My Tiffany's! How are you, Bobby? Are women back to short skirts yet? They were, but you missed it. They're back in long ones again. I wouldn't care if they were wearing barrels. Got a present for you. Shake hands with Charlie Gino. How are you? He's your new sparring partner. How long is he in for? Mm, that depends on you. Well, let's get to work. If I don't get out of here soon, the crickets will drive me crazy. Gino, go in the house and get ready. Sure. Time. Julio, is the kid as good as you say? Mama, Mike, he's ready to go. Julio was about as subtle as a 12-course Italian meal, but he was usually right. When I saw the kid, I had to agree with him. Gregory was ready to go. He was smooth, clean. Best of all, he was a thinker. What's the right hand? Boy, that's real that Kimberly moves. A beautiful move. Look at him step, huh? I matched him with a good, tough kid at the local arena. Two weeks later, he started his professional career as a fighter. Four rounds at the bottom of the card. First event of the evening. Now, I want to fight. I don't care what kind of fight, as long as it's a good one. Now, shake hands, come out fighting. Keep your chin down, your hands high. Stay off the ropes and out of the corners. Remember, be careful, you know? Salt Lake. I matched him with a local favorite. A Swede with a strong right hand and a dozen knockouts to his credit. The Swede was a mauler. It was a good fight to watch because Bobby boxed him all the way. When the time was right, he picked his spot, and those months of education at the training farm paid off. They weren't all easy. A couple of times the going was real rough. But he bounced right back because he had what it takes. 
He took them all right on down the line. Every style in the book. From old timers who could still teach him a thing or two to sluggers and fancy dance. He got more and more experience. And his reputation began growing. He could box and he could throw him from anywhere. He never had to get set. And like one of the fighters said, if he ever hit you, he'd hurt your whole family. He got a few cuts and a lot of experience. It paid off in big dividends. He met Guilardo again. But this time, he had on his boxing trunks. And Guilardo still didn't like it one bit. Last night, a leading middleweight became a serious contender for Fred Stevens' well-protected crown. That's it, Doctor. Bobby Gregory, Mike Dundee's flashy, hard-hitting discovery sent the crowd home early with a seven-round KO over Frankie Altry. What's my next fight? Oh, I've had some offers. I haven't decided yet. Say, uh, Stevens is having a championship fight next week. You want to take a look at it with me? Sure. All right. Am I a serious contender? Well, you're getting there. Another year or so, maybe. A year? Well, you've only had 23 fights so far. Stevens only had 30 before he beat Talbot. Yeah, sure, I know, but he had help. What do you mean, he had help? Well, Talbot should have licked him with a lot of smart money. He said no. Fixed? Mm, arranged. The bucket, kid. Finish your breakfast. But Stevens is a good fighter. Sure he is. Well, Jack Bellotti owns him. I've heard of Bellotti. You're going to hear a lot more. It's like the reporter says, you're a serious contender. And Bellotti gets interested in serious contenders. Go to the neutral corner. <laughs> well, kid, what do you think? Stevens is awful good, but I'd say Fazio was overmatched. Did you ever see Fazio fight before? No. He can do better. Oh, come on, Mike. Fazio's taking too much punishment. Grow up, will you? They're splitting the purse right down the middle to say nothing to the side bets he's got on Stevens. But this is a championship fight. Sure it is. It ends in the next round. Oh. Tell you what I'll do with you. I'll bet you a bag of peanuts Fazio goes out in the next round. Well, come on, come on, come on. You got a bet. All right. Hello, Dundee. How are you, Pilati? This is Nancy Shaw. This is Mike Dundee, honey. How do you do? When are you going to get the middleweight that can give my boys some competition? Meet Bobby Gregory. Bobby, it's Jack Malati. This is Miss Shaw. Hello, Miss Shaw. I've been hearing lots of good things about you, kid. You keep knocking out the competition. Maybe I'll let you get a shot at the champ. He keeps knocking out the competition. You won't have much to say about it. <laughs> competition is easy to find, and I always got something to say about it. I hope you're better on the fight. Oh, yeah, sure did. Have a peanut? No, thanks. Nice meeting you, Mr. Gregory. Hope to see you again soon. I don't think you could make the wait, lady. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't have to wait a year. Hey, put those down. You're in training. Come on. Be right with you, kid. Keep it to yourself. Wait until you hear from me. <coughs> Lousy boxing commissions on my back again. We got to give him a fight, a good one, lots of color. Something that looks tough for Stevens. That's easy. Don't fix it. Don't fix it? Supposing Stevens gets laid out, I got too much money. Hey, wait a minute. What's wrong with that? With what, boss? With Stevens getting laid out. Suppose we match him with a good sharp kid and Stevens loses. At the right odds would make a lot of money. Sure. An anxious kid who don't figure the win yet. Two and a half, three to one. You'll have to get a pretty good kid. Stevens may have had a lot of setups, but he's still one of the best. Stevens does what I tell him. And I'm not just a kid. Dundee's boy. That makes it clean. Like a letter from the Board of Health. 
Jen. Fit the action to the words and the words to the action. Lovely. What is? Shakespeare, squash head. Is that that South Club from Philadelphia? Groggy, please, go climb a tree. Hey, they tag Stevens at two and a half to one. That's probably Mike. Good evening. Hey, you got the wrong room. I want to talk to the next champ. You're drunk. You're right. Go sober up. You shouldn't be around here. We're going to fight you tomorrow night. I want to talk to Gregory. Let him alone. What's on your mind, Stevens? I want to talk to you. Hello. Get a cup of coffee, will you, fellas? Oh, there's one in the kitchen. Get it downstairs. Come on, Groggy. You got a drink? Nah, you better sober up. Why? You're going to beat me anyway. What difference does it make if I'm drunk? What are you talking about? You're going to be the next champ, boy. Yeah, you're going to be the next champ in the seventh round. The lottie makes himself a couple of hundred thousand. You better get out of here. All right, I'll get out. But I want to tell you something. I've been a champ for three years now. I start out pretty much like you, clean kid. Lottie want to make me champ, and I let him. Now he wants me to lose. Lose? I don't want to. Then don't. I got to. I need the dough. The Lottie took care of that. May sound a little corny, but I got a wife and kid. I can't fight you knowing this. You've got to fight me. If you don't, I'll get hurt. Then why did you tell me? Because maybe you're like I was, and I want to see you get the right break. I haven't done much right in the last three years, and I figure it's about time. Maybe I'm feeling sorry for myself. I don't know. See you in the ring, sucker. Stevens versus Gregory was a sellout. I was sure I had the next champ. Now, you boys know the rules governing boxing in this state. I want a good, clean, honest fight. If either of you scores the knockdown, I want you to go to a neutral corner and wait there until I motion you out. The title meant a lot to me. If I owned the champ, Bellotti was through and the fight game could wash its hands. Shake hands now and come out fighting, and good luck to both of you. Be careful. Feel them out. Don't take any chances now. Remember, keep your hands up. The fight started slow, but most of the big ones usually do. Stevens looked pretty sharp. Bobby seemed to be a little bit too cautious. I wasn't worried. I knew what my boy could do. For the first few rounds, Bobby would stay away, feel him out, get to know Stevens' style. Watch how he threw a jab, see if he lowered his guard after he threw the jab, and if he did, wait for his spot and shoot it right over the guard. I didn't know then about Stevens' visit to Bobby the night before, or about Bellotti's orders to Stevens to take a dive in the seventh. So I just relaxed and waited for Bobby to start opening up. If I'd known what was going on, if I'd known what was going to happen later, I'd have thrown the towel in right then. During the second round, I began to notice something. Bobby was covering up. He wasn't throwing his combinations. What he did, he missed. It looked like he was trying to stay away from Stevens. He had a lot of openings, but he wouldn't take advantage of any of them. I kept telling myself that it was just nerves, that maybe it would take him a couple of more rounds before he'd snap out of it. The more he fought, the less he looked like a fighter. He seemed to be on a bicycle for the first time in his life, and he was doing a bad job of riding it. Julio was worried, too. Bobby looked like an amateur, and even though Stevens was getting to him, he, he didn't look much better than Gregory. They were hitting each other, but every time they did, it looked like they were going to stop and apologize. The whole thing started to smell rotten. 
I couldn't figure it out, but there was nothing to do but sit there and wait to see what was going to happen. Come on, Boston! The next round was just like the rest. Come on, kid. They dusted each other with light punches. Stevens waited for Bobby to come to him, and Bobby stayed on his bicycle. Come on, kid. Come on, come on. Make it look good. Break it up. What's the matter, kid? You look like you're dead on your feet. Are you tired? Come on, slow up, slow up. You'll wear out front. I can't help it. The kid won't open up. By the fifth round, the crowds were beginning to yell for the fight. But Stevens and Gregory couldn't hear it. round was just the same. In fact, if anything, it got slower, and I was running out of excuses. Come on, kid! Get away from there! Hey, Rip, watch out there! Bobby looked like he was getting ready to go in the tank any minute. He wasn't even trying to make it look good. But what made him do it? Why would a kid who wanted to be a fighter more than anything else in the world lose without even trying? In the seventh, I started getting a hunch. I couldn't put the pieces together, but I made a bet with myself that when I did, they'd spell out Bellotti. Julio. What's wrong with him? Mike, I didn't want to tell you. Stevens came around last night and he was drunk. Here I go, kid. Okay, start swinging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're not gonna get away with this, kid. That was the phoniest dive I ever saw. Take it easy. Take it easy. Just over a nickel tramp put in the tank. I'm gonna crucify you, Gregory. You crazy kid. You got a lot of moxie. Get out of here. Yeah, get out and take him with you. He's no better than you are. He's better than you, me, or anybody. Shut up! Get out. Wait a minute. What's going on here? I was supposed to take the dive. Shut up! I got loaded last night and told this stupid little hero. He knows how much you hate Bilotti, so he broke him for you. Bilotti lost 200,000 tonight. What? Bilotti's broke and he's mad. Is this on the level? That kid could have beat me tonight. But he tossed away the championship for something you believe in, Dundee. What is this, a family gathering? Leave the kid alone, Bilotti. Get out of here. I'm the guy that got out of line. Take it out on me, but leave the kid alone. I dropped 200,000. You dropped a lot more than that, Bilotti. You're all washed up. Not until I pay off. Come on, Stevens. I've had enough. I'm going to commission. And I'm going to make sure he gets there. I lay you six to and even you don't make the front door. You got a bet. Lovely. The choppers are here, and I suggest the alley. That was one fight I didn't want to run away from. But with Bloody's hoodlums in the hall, the shortest distance to the commissioner's office was through the window. Rematch. Well, that's the way it was. We lost a fight, but we won the big one. Bellotti thought he was going to make a fortune and keep his dirty paws in the fight game. He just didn't figure on an honest kid who thought more of the game than winning a crown. Stevens had his say to the commission, and Bellotti, Bellotti got off easy with a couple of years. Oh, yeah, there was a rematch. Like I said, Bobby Gregory had what it took. He's a great champion.